What's up YouTube? Liam here back from Rebel Retex and today we are going to be converting a fridge into an incubator. So the fridge doesn't need to be working. Um, this is an old fridge that I got yesterday from a guy here in Paul. It was 350 rand so it's quite cost effective. And um, this is basically it. That's the racks that I took out. Um, so I'm going to scrap, scrap everything. Take everything out that won't be needed. As I said, it doesn't need to be working. So I'm taking the engine out, not the engine, the tank and everything. Um, and everything over there that's not. Basically, that's coming out um, over there. I'll see what I can take out there. This is the back side. All of this is coming off. And all of the old things over there is also coming off. Um, if you want to know where you can find these old fridges, basically in South Africa, if you go onto Facebook and Marketplace, just type in broken fridge for sale, there's a lot of them. Um, and it, they range from 300 Rand to 600. You won't need to pay more than that. There will be a lot available. So I'm going to start scrapping everything, taking everything out that won't be needed. Okay, so I scrapped everything, as you can see. There's nothing left in here. I took that thing out as well. Um, this was just in with screws. You can see the holes still there. Um, this back thing was quite a mission to get out. Um, I screwed it loose, but it was a part. This thing over here was like a small metal piece that was built in at the back side, so I couldn't get it out. If you get one like this, I basically just folded the thing up. I'll show you guys now. And started turning it until it snapped off. And... Um, I use these cutters just to cut it off as close to there as possible and then I use the hammer to like hit it in over there and then as you can see there's still like it's a hole there so you don't want heat escaping so what I will do is get silicone and cover this whole thing over there and that hole you can see it look you can see through there that's also a hole that thing will also be covered with silicone and these holes as well so all the holes will be covered with silicone to make sure there's no heat going out because you want a steady temperature and then that big hole will be used for my cables for the heat mat i'm going to put one heat mat over here and another one over here so that's the plan um here at the back this is all the scrap that i took off as you can see i just folded this was the thing that was on the inside. I just folded it off until it snapped over there. Um, so this is everything that I took off. So what I'm doing is I'm cleaning, just roughly cleaning everything out with soap. And I used some Handy Andy. Before the eggs go in, I'll use an alcohol based, like all the hand sanitizers that you use with the Corona going on. Use the hand sanitizer inside that has a lot of alcohol in just to kill all the germs and everything. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of new stuff going on here since the last time. Um, I got everything yesterday and I decided to build everything and then explain what I did. So firstly, I cleaned everything out with um, alcohol-based cleaner. And then let me start with the fan. This is an, a computer fan, a 12 centimeter by 12 centimeter computer fan. And it comes with a cable, so basically I cut off the cable and connected it to this little socket thingy over here. Now, this is pretty cheap. I think it's like one rand for one. Um, basically, I connected the red and the black cable to this side. And this is a normal Samsung charger cable, which the head part I cut off and connected it to that part. Um, you can't use the normal thick cable on here it will blow i already blowed one fan so that's basically all i did here um and it goes through the back and I'll just show you over here here it comes in and as you can see it's a normal samsung charger that goes into the plug over here then secondly the heat pad it's a 35 by 35 centimeter heat pad it's 20 watt if i'm not mistaken and I decided to put it on a tile because if I'm not going to use the incubator, I can just disconnect it and use this in a cage if necessary. And 
yeah that's basically why i put it on the towel otherwise you can just stick it onto the fridge if you have enough heat pads um, in my guys case i decided to put it on a towel it makes it just easy usable and it's then i can use it for more functions than just the incubator itself so basically what i did here is just stick it onto this and then it goes in there and it also goes into another socket on this side and on the other side this is normal cable you can buy this at any shop this is just normal cable i just used um insulation tape to stick it on here and it goes through there and then it comes around out here you see here it goes into another socket and this socket connects to my thermostat through there so basically this is the name of the thermostat over there yeah xhw 302 3002 sorry over there and then yeah basically the yellow goes with the red and the black goes with the black i'm not sure if it's right but it works so that's all you do there as you can see this is quite nice socket over here connectors i'm not sure exactly what you call them but that's what i did there so that gives the power to the um or not the power that connects my heating pad to the thermostat then here on the other side you can see red goes with red and black goes with black i did the same over here because the, these wires are really thin so i use a socket to for a better connection otherwise you, you can't really the, the copper in here is too thick to twist it so that's what I did over on this side, connected it through here, and this goes into a normal plug over here. Um, that gives the power, and then as I mentioned, this one goes to the heating pad. I am only using one heating pad at the moment. If I do decide, or if I see the temperature doesn't reach what it should, then I'll put another one in here or at the sides, but that's for later. And basically what I would do then is take the other heating cable um, the heating pads cable and just push it in on top of this one um, and it will be exactly the same connection and everything just remember not to use the the wattage of the heating pads shouldn't be more than what the inky uh, what the thermostat can handle so this thermostat specifically can take a thousand five hundred watts and this is only a 20 watts so that's completely fine um, and yeah that's basically all i did over there that's pretty simple as you can see and then these are my two well it's part of the thermostat so this one is for the thermostat it's basically the thermometer i will say for the thermostat this is going to come on top of the well, i'm not sure on top or underneath the bucket which would have my eggs on and i'm using this it comes with the fridge the steel racket will be in here and then the plastic tub with the eggs in so this is connected to the thermostat which is over there and this is basically gonna help me to regulate the temperature here or it's gonna help the thermostat and this is a normal thermostat i'm not sure exactly what you call this piece of it but this is connected to a normal thermostat which just basically goes through there and it's connected here so as you can see that's the reading inside now and that's 23.5 and you see this is the temperature on the heating pad as it's busy rising um okay that's not rising but yeah it will be rising now um, and when the blue light's on, it means the heating pad is busy doing what it should be. Um, I have a funny feeling that I will be needing two heating pads. But I'm going to leave this in for about two hours or so. And try and get um, this whole thing nice and hot to see if everything works perfectly. I'm going to put in the rack now. Um, let me just put it in show you guys this is basically the one it's just gonna be there and then this is the one that's connected to my um to that thermostat the main one let's put it that way i'm gonna i'll just tape this over here 
and then it's going to sit there and as soon as the temperature is what it should be in here which is 30 degrees i'm testing it on 30 degrees celsius um, that thing will go off and it will keep the temperature 30 degrees inside here so my fan is dead let's start it again so basically that's as simple as it this is basically an incubator now so my tub will go on here and then everything is done. Um, there is a still a few holes left, like that one over there and the other one that you can see around there and there where screws were in. Um, I will be closing them all. So for now, um, this is so. All done, closed up. That's the reading inside. Uh, this one, I'm gonna use this one to just check what the temperature is inside to make sure everything is perfect. Cause you don't wanna open the fridge every time to look at the eggs and look if everything's fine cause your heating pad's gonna work over time. Every time you open it, the heat goes out. So this is basically for monitoring and this will do its job accordingly. And this is pretty simple to set up. If you're done setting up and you see the, if you want to set the temperature you press this chinese word over here then it says p0 and then you press up or down p0 is there then you press this again you see it's 29.8 that's my minimum temperature and if i press this again and the up button and p1 that's going to be your highest temperature it can go and that's set on 30. And then if you just leave it, it's going to flicker, flicker, and then stop. So basically that's 23.8 at the moment. And that will go up, up, up until it's at, well, above 29.8. And then it will keep the temperature over there. And this may take, may take a while. So if you have a due date for your eggs, that's, let's say, the 10th of April, for example, I would suggest you start testing the your incubator out at least two weeks before and keeping it on for a week before the eggs come so that when the eggs are there everything is perfect you can just pull them from your snake and put them back in so that's the incubator all done um, thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and that you learned something you can ask me questions in the comment section below or if you want to yeah basically ask me anything or want to give me some advice on how i can make this more efficient or something yeah just leave it in the comment section below so thanks that's all for this video